Hello, community, and welcome to the final of our seven days, seven hangouts leading up to our one year anniversary. Today is Big Hair uh, broadcast brought to you by the good folks at Pravana who make my hair care products. So, thank you, Pravana, and a little quick shout out to um, Daniel, my hair guy back in Indiana. I miss you tremendously. Um, my, obviously, this is what happens when I don't have you. Uh, so community has requested my hair is big today. Today we're going to be talking about fishing and character customization and way up there on that customer or customer <laughs> customer customization way up there on that character customization is going to be beards a highly requested topic and today with us to talk about these wonderful topics is of course our liege Lord British in New York. Here, here everybody uh, thank you all for coming out uh, thank you for supporting our project thank you for being a part of our community uh, looking forward to getting some fun uh, design work done with you guys today. Uh, Chris, you want to introduce yourself as well? Uh, obviously, I'm Chris, since they just uh, called me that. Uh, I'm the tech director, but I also contribute a lot to the design stuff, and uh, I'll go ahead and apologize in advance. As most people know, we have a three-week-old, or we'll be three weeks old tomorrow, and on the weekends, I try to do more to take care of babies, so last night, I didn't get much sleep at all, so... Please forgive me if I doze off in the middle of the conversation. And uh, and also, Chris, you can help keep us uh, <clears throat> honest, shall we say, uh, because one of the things I wanted to do today, <clears throat> and pardon, I have a cough, actually, so uh, I've got the cough, I'm sucking on the cough drops through the uh, session today, <clears throat> as you can tell. Um, but uh, hopefully Chris can keep us honest. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do today is talk about fishing and character customization and since these are uh, uh, systems uh, that are largely data-driven and art-driven, uh, uh, your probabilities in the case of things like fishing, uh, these we thought would be great, uh, a great topic to cover largely in concert with you all. So uh, uh, Joseph uh, will be trying to go into, and I also have the soda chat up, so we can try to grab uh, ideas, not only questions, but ideas and suggestions about those two topics. Uh, we'll take them one at a time. Um, uh, since Star is uh, in uh, uh, Italy, as you guys who were with us yesterday might know, uh, he would, uh, at this point in time, remind us to uh, remind you that these are discussions, not uh, guarantees, not describing how things are or absolutely will be, but our uh, current thinking and brainstorming session, especially today. Uh, so as he would say, Chris, what would he say? Don't lawyer me, bro. So please don't. We'll, uh, we'll try to repeat that at the bottom of the hour. And I have one more uh, 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 re you know, uh, request, uh, uh, boon to ask of, of you wonderful people in our community. Uh, right at the end of the hour when we start to give away, we have some giveaways we're going to give out today. Uh, and I'm going to cut out at that time uh, because uh, our two-year-old daughter, Kinga, has decided she really wants to go see the island of lemurs. And the only tickets I could get were for her right at the end of the hour. So at 15 minutes till the end of the hour, I'm going to cut out while the prizes get given away. Uh, so I can take Kinga uh, to her movie. So apologies for cutting out a couple minutes early myself as well. But um, uh, so, uh, but let's uh, let, Joseph. Unless you have anything else, uh, why don't we uh, let, let me frame up or tee up uh, fishing first, beards second. Does that sound fine to you, Joseph? That sounds great. Questions are flying in, uh, hot off chat. So I'm uh, trying to okay. So try to as quickly fishing, as possible. Fishing questions and fishing comments. First, and we'll do this uh, till 20 or 25 minutes after the hour. And as much as anything, we're interested in ideas. And all of you know, both Chris and I will, and you, uh, of course, Joseph too, will 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 push up or talk about the ones we like. Um, and then Chris can tell us which ones of those are uh, uh, feasible. Yeah, and I wanted to chime in on that, just so people know. There's a lot of things in the game that have dependencies, like obviously combat, uh, the lower level crafting stuff. Uh, how characters work, how you move around the world. If you look at the dependency tree, fishing is not very low on that. Same thing with the character beard. So this is something that we've put less effort into really trying to nail down, which is great in that uh, that means that you guys can really help us define what this is to a larger extent than most, you know, many other things where we already have preconceived conceptions. So and, uh, looking forward to hearing your ideas. And let me put out some a couple that came up yesterday, just as teasers. So, um, as uh, in fact, yesterday somebody uh, during the in the soda chat said, you know, why in the world are we talking about fishing even yesterday in multiplayer? 
And uh, not only did I jump on them, but I think most of you in the Soda Chat did too, to go, wait, you don't get it. Uh, you know, we didn't get it when we put out UO, and UO was literally originally 50-50 chance catch a fish, and that was the beginning and end of the simulation. And yet it became Im immensely popular immediately, and it took us years to go back and, and add some depth to it. Uh, so this time we want to actually, you know, uh, we, we could start with 50-50 chance catch a fish, but wouldn't it be fun if uh, things that were suggested the other day, like... Uh, uh, giving a higher probability of catching fish if you're near underwater obstructions like shipwrecks and docks and things of that nature for you know uh, which is common for fish nurseries to, to uh, conglomerate around. Um, wouldn't it be great to have seasonal fishing? People describe it as migration patterns. I interpret it as seasonal uh, out of uh, convenience, where each month different species became uh, you know more uh, popular. Um, somebody suggested trophies, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and all-time size records to where when we catch a fish, you can randomize, no matter what species it is, you can randomly, you know, give it a slightly bigger, slightly smaller size, put a scale vector into that, uh, and, uh, and then keep track of who uh, gets the trophy that week. Uh, and then we've had one artist even say, keep uh, pointing out a few times that they've made a, a unity set of, of floats and bobbers and things. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember their name. Maybe they're on chat here with us. Can kind of jump in and, and remind us again. It'd be Melchior Major. Melchior, thank you. Yes, and uh, fear not. Even though we haven't grabbed those yet, we're with you entirely. That's great. Uh, you know, under the assumption fishing uses a, a float to give me maybe have a little skillful wait for it to bob and then give a yank and try to catch your fish. Uh, you know, if we get that level of depth and that that enormous level of depth into the simulation, uh, you know, maybe that would be. Uh, Skill, skillful uh, pull at bobber. Um, you know, things like that. So uh, that's at least a baseline. Um, from that, uh, let's see, Joseph, have you extracted any questions or suggestions so far? Oh, lots of questions about fishing. Uh, the first one uh, from uh, Amber Rain. She loves the Leviathans and the Kraken in Ultima Online, and will we be able to look forward to these and shroud of the Avatar in the future? And, and will these have sunken treasures and the SOS in them? Ah, so um, uh, you, you, you know the uh, I would I would add one more to that, which was the the whirlpool, which wasn't really a creature, but had, you know have a similar effect. And so over time, as as water sports become, um, uh, pardon all my air quoting, uh, but as water sports uh, become more uh, popular, as uh, we get to move ships around the world, I think you'll see those become uh, more common also. So that you know, as Star Wars mentioned the other day, when we get ship combat in, even before ships can travel. Uh, you know, uh, having a sea monster uh, or pirates board you, uh, you know, are the kinds of things we'll pull in. So, short answer, yes. Whether it relates to fishing, hard to say. You want to pull another one for us, Joseph? Okay, all right. Let's see, question number two. Uh, will fishing be cast and forget like Ultima Online or watch the bobber like in WoW or, of course, possibly something else? Well, so so I would say you know the first implementation will be uh, cast and forget, but uh, but maybe what do you what do you, what do you think, uh, Chris? Is uh, is skillful catching uh, easy enough that we should try to push it into the first revision of fishing? Uh, I think the skillful. I mean, that's just a choice as to what people prefer. I mean, it's so easy to get in terms of the tech, so we could totally do the. Uh, but what do people prefer? I mean, they asked without stating which one they were preferring. <clears throat> I'm all for getting uh, more skill into the game and making people pay attention rather than just making it purely a social type thing. <clears throat> okay. And uh, looking for more fishing stuff on here. Oh, will there be like spear fishing tridents, blowguns, etc.? Um, well, I would say, uh, well, Hazard, uh, who asked that, I would say over time, those are all great additions. Um, but I think, uh, you know, at first, uh, you know, running presumptively that we do the skillful pull when you see the bobber uh, jiggle, when you see Melchior's bobbers uh, dip under the water, uh, then um, uh, I suspect uh, that'll be the... the it, it, it's an easy expansion to go from fishing poles and bobbers and maybe even lures, um, you know, some kind of tackle use, you know, heavier light tackle utilization, which I should put on the list here too. Uh, tackle and lures. And lures... However the heck you spell that, um, and uh, but but to then switch to like a trident or spear gun, that'll be a very different kind of fishing. So those will be a bit harder to implement. Uh, they're perfectly good uh, suggestions, uh, but you know we'll have to see where they fit on the 
on the list. It seems most people in chat are in favor of the uh, skill fishing, which I, I am too. There's always going to be some luck in it, as uh, Hazard was mentioning, skill with some luck in the cast and forget. Uh, but uh, a lot of that stuff, the way that our current inventory works and will be working going forward, is probably most fish, and this is totally on the fly. I've not talked with uh, B, a.k.a. Clutch, uh, about this stuff for how we're going to do it, but fish are probably something that will stack. Stacking things do not have a... We don't track them independently, so you won't see... If you have a stack of fish, you won't see who they're caught by, but if we have trophy fish that are the rare fish, uh, then those can be non-stackable, but you know it'll even have a caught by. I'm sure that's one of those things over time we'll probably have a way that you can mount a fish uh, to make a decoration for your house so when you catch a trophy fish. And that's one of those things also that'll have to be coming from the uh, server rather than generated on your client for the rare ones. But anyways, and, still. And, uh, Rihanna also asked, you know, will there be visuals for each uh, different fish type? And there already are for, you know, certain kinds. And again, it goes back to that stacking question that Chris was still talking about. You know, if we have, say, a redfish that, you know, might be slightly larger or slightly smaller, the size variations after you've caught them under the assumption it's not a trophy fish are probably not that relevant. And that way we can continue to stack them into redfish after just telling you what it is and after you stack it on top of other redfish that you own. Um, but, but that way you can at least keep the redfish separate from, say, the pike uh, because there might be different recipes that call for redfish versus pike in the, in the meal um, but, uh, or catfish. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I like the, at least thinking out loud, uh, stack the things that are the same species that are not trophies, uh, leave the trophy fish, uh, separate. Oh, hey, uh, Chris, you seem to have gone off, uh, mic. I'm here. I muted it there. The dog's in here barking. Uh, I forget if we have a fishing skill tree. I think we do. I'll look that up here while I mute the microphone so the dog doesn't bark into it. Uh, StarTex uh, asks, would the fishing break your line? Uh, I would say yes, under the assumption we make tackle and lures. Uh, you know, take two light a tackle, uh, and, uh, you know, you, 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 a fish could break it. Uh, and conversely, too heavy of tackle might, uh, uh, you know, might not uh, appeal uh, to the fish that demand uh, lighter lighter tackle, you know, like fly fishing. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I think we could easily do that, or at least conceptually that fits in the in that same uniform thread that we continue to add stuff. <coughs> oh, uh, uh, Mardag, Mard, Margard asks, can we use lobster traps and catch lobsters? Again, I love these ideas, by the way. Um, so... Uh, in fact, lobster traps, there's other kinds of forms of traps. I'm going to put the spear gun in this little extra category, too, as well as harpoons and tridents. Uh, and, uh, and on that same uh, area, it could be things like a frog gig. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I've only done a tiniest bit of hunting, a little more fishing, but a tiny bit of, quote, hunting. I went duck hunting once with my father, a terrible, horrific experience when I winged one duck and had it crawl, flop off into the bushes and scream until it died. Uh, very traumatic. But uh, I also... You know, I have almost this, uh, an exact same story that is just as traumatic. Oh, my God, don't bring it up. And, uh, and the, other, the other sort of hunting that I did was once I went frog gigging with my grandfather and, you know, uh, chest-high waders and a little tiny trident out trying to spear frogs in the bush. In this case, I think, fortunately, I didn't catch any. Uh, so, uh, but any case, so, uh, I think all those things are doable. Those will just, I think, uh, uh, be, uh, anything that's not lures, bobbers, tackle strength, uh, seasonal migration, shipwrecks, those all things kind of fit into one uniform set, and so, uh, I expect we'll tackle that set first, is my expectation as of this real-time discussion we're having. And by the way, the lobster trap reminds me just thinking about how lo lobster trap might work, that it'd be a long-term thing of set and come back to it. Uh, that reminds me, that was, I mean, this was part of the reason why we wanted to have the waterfront houses, and one of the advantages is that it just makes your fishing experience so convenient that you can sit there at your house, you know, and fish, and then take it back in and cook it immediately. Uh, also, I looked up the fishing skill tree. Mm -hmm. uh, 
is currently it's part of the forestry that it's the same thing as like gathering stuff. Okay, so just as uh, skill or not, really, not a lot yeah. of detail. Um, uh, uh, Rhiannon, by the way, you asked uh, that if you have, uh, fear not, you're asking will like redfish and pikes have different visuals, and the answer is yes. Uh, if it's a different name of fish, we'll, we will go ahead and make a different graphic for it so that when you're making, you know, redfish pie, you're cutting up a redfish to make that pie with. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so yeah, I've had, uh, that's kind of default assumption. You may not see that in there now with like release four. I think there was, you know, there's. I mean, I think it was literally redfish, bluefish, greenfish, yellowfish, like Dr. Seuss, and they all look the same. Uh, but that was really just a temporary uh, part of where we were in the implementation. Yeah, and we can go ahead and put out the request. I mean, like a fish is a perfect thing for community art. Uh, community art guys to do. It's uh, simple enough and confined enough that. Uh, I should apologize. I think we're about we're more than a month behind on the art coming in because we're trying to transition that to someone other than me. Uh, and with the leading up to R four and baby stuff, I have been absolutely horrendous. As uh, Melchior informed me that I have uh, thirty items waiting for me from him alone. So I expect he's got some fish in there. I think he's got uh, the bobbers and crabs and a ton of other stuff, but. Fish is something that would be a good uh, community art item. Uh, and uh, yeah, and on that front too, just pulling things out here in real time. <clears throat> um, people are asking about catching fish and putting them in your own aquarium. That was something really cool out of UO. Uh, again, it's a little bit different system, but uh, I agree. We want to re re try to recapture something like that uh, by all means. And um, uh, oh, and I missed one other. Oh, oh, and yeah, the other one was, uh, will casting in certain areas have an effect on catching different kinds of fish or items? That's from NevDog. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I added that to the notes here, too, where just like we said, probability of a catch might be changing based on being on a shipwreck or on docks, or I'm going to add bridges even to that. You know, it, it could be, uh, you know, at least when I was young, uh, you know, when I, went, when I went fishing off the bridges in my home turf, that was when we tended to catch things that were more sedentary, like, um, you know, the catfish and crabs in my case. Uh, but uh, when you would go out and fish, uh, you know, in more moving waters uh, amongst the bramble and uh, docks and things of that nature, uh, you caught a different kind of uh, carp and other things too. So uh, anyway, the so yes, I think the answer is yes to that. That'd be a perfectly good thing to throw in uh, changing species catch variations because again, that lets you as a fisherman go, oh, I happen to know it's the season for X kind of fish. They tend to be larger than the usual non-seasonal fish in my area. So I'm going to go to the place to optimize that fish, optimize my, my use of tackle, uh, and hopefully catch a trophy. So uh, uh, I, I think it's a, a very cool idea. Hey, I also see uh, Finn has joined us. Finn, you want to say hi? Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. Yay, yeah, it's Finn. It's me. Finn, are you a fisherman in real life? I am a fisherman in real life, actually. I'm looking at the lake right now as we speak. Excellent, excellent. Well, I don't know how much of this you've heard, but I think people throw out some cool, cool ideas for fishing. Uh, they're going to really have to do this. Uh, Lord uh, Royu says, "Could we use live bait? Uh, that's uh, interesting. That might be that might be harder than some of the other things, but I'll, I'll make a record of that idea too. But it uh, could, could be tricky to have literally swimmingly live bait. Uh, and... Uh, uh, let's see. I'm looking now for any more ideas. I'm going to scan up and down through the things that, that uh, uh, Joseph has pushed across. Uh, I do love the idea of having a, not necessarily live bait, but catching fish, and you catch the little fish, and then you have to use that as the big bait. And, of course, if you miss your skill roll on that, you may lose the little fish, but uh, giving you the opportunity to catch a bigger fish, because obviously a little fish isn't going to eat a little fish. Only a big fish is going to eat a little fish. Yeah, I'd call that fresh bait as much as live bait, which uh, might be uh, a good thing. In fact, I'll make that as a note, because I think fresh bait is much more doable and kind of fits that same feature arc. Plus, we don't have to worry about trying to go find worms. <laughs> and on a note related to that, several people have asked if they can dig up worms or find bait in other ways aside from just simply purchasing them. Uh, that's I think that's a great idea. And so somebody tell me, uh, let's uh, get some ideas of what things make fresh bait. Small fish, worms, uh, bugs obviously fit that category. Um, anything else? Uh, Larva. Sorry? Larva is a good bait. Larva. 
Mm, you can eat all these, a lot of these things too if you really wanted to. Okay, well, unless there's some other questions popping up there, uh, I actually think that is an excellent suite of ideas. These are not things we would have uh, uh, thought of on our own even in a much longer uh, design session. Hey, I see a baby, Chris. Hey. Chris, sorry, this is an important moment here, guys. All right, baby's uh, camera debut here. Uh, here's the uh, little demon that uh, probably hurt R4's polish level quite a bit. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I only went to grab her because she was crying, so I'm going to take her upstairs and let uh, Mom take care of her and feed her. Oh, oh you crying for your camera debut. Oh, Wow, that's great. <sighs> crying is a good thing. <laughs> that's All fantastic. Right. Be right back. <clears throat> All right, and, and while you're going, we'll, uh, we'll, let me give a, uh, go back and give our thank yous and disclaimers for about the middle of the dis design discussion. Um, again, as we said, everybody, uh, you know, first, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for for being such a wonderful community with us. Uh, it is such a joy and a privilege to be creating this game in concert with you, and I mean that far beyond just the financial support, which obviously means so much to us. But uh, uh, but sessions like this, and and frankly, even just what's going on on the bulletin boards, uh, you know, on a, on a slow burn uh, around the clock. Um, this is really helping us make a far, far better game, and, and uh, I hopefully, and we believe that a game that much more uh, closely aligns with your desires, uh, and we waste a lot less time on guessing or developing things that, that won't be used or popular. Uh, and so again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but as the disclaimer goes, uh, you know, these are, we're, this is real time, real time brainstorming, these are ideas that we're going to put into the queue and stir up and and uh, I don't know, Finn, you're actually going to be the one that gets, uh, uh, until you arrived, it was Chris who's going to have to give us the technical, is this going to work or not. You're actually probably going to be the one that ends up implementing a fair bit of that. This Is, is that safe to say? Yeah, chopping up chopping up your fresh fish and then, uh, and then throwing it back out there. Get okay. some chum. All right. So, uh, so yeah, we have the man who will probably get to do the work, uh, you know, here with as well. Uh, but let's switch. Because, and, and Finn, what we actually said is the first uh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to do um, the fishing. This next 20 minutes or so, let's do uh, uh, character customization. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when there's prizes giving out, I've already begged a boon to take off to take care of my baby. So, uh, so I'll cut out while you guys uh, wrap up. Um, okay, so let's move on to character customization. And I see uh, that uh, Joseph has already put up a nice link to uh, a fair bit of posts on the SOTA websites. Um, uh, and, uh, and, of course, we'll go look at that, but we can't really look at that during this real-time uh, process. Um, <clears throat> uh, so coming, let's start right at the top of that with Canterbury. What do we, is the ideal number of generic faces for us to be choosing from? Um, that's a number we plan to, you know, grow over time. Uh, Chris, what do you think we can get in technically, you know, at the beginning? Is there really a, a limit, or is this a big uh, memory hog or not? It's not a big memory hog compared to uh, the other things in the game. Really, just the variety of all the environmental stuff is the biggest memory hog. Uh, it's really content and how much content time we actually uh, focus on it. I mean, obviously, we've got a split where people are working on things. We'll definitely get in some more stuff than what we have now. Uh, what we have in there now is really proving out systems and making sure things work, and uh, it's just a matter of how much time we want to spend on these these things. I was looking over the link. Sorry if I seem distracted. Yeah, no problem. We're all trying. It's going by fast today. Um, so uh, somebody made another interesting suggestion, which is for aging. Love it. We'll we'll take that offline and talk about it. Um, another one that was in here uh, was uh, barber shops. Um, we've uh, uh, I've actually the way I describe that in the office is I I, I actually take a uh, a cue from Logan's Run if you guys remember the where in fact that's where I got the onk symbol for virtue in Ultima was Logan's Run and um, if you remember they also had the laser uh, new U three eighty six or four eighty six or whatever they called it the place where you could go have your face changed uh, and so in my mind even changing your facial appearance much less your hairstyles I think is fair game in a magical world. And so, uh, and that way, also you don't have to really pay that close of attention during the character creation process. You can just get in the game and get playing. 
And then once you see how the game works and how everybody else looks, and you can go to a uh, the new you and uh, uh, you know and really craft take the time you would like to craft the perfect you uh, once you're already actually in game. So uh, anyway, that's what I favor in addition to things like a barbershop. Uh, looking at the link, there's the aging thing that actually what it looks like they're doing is that they probably have a shader that has an extra normal map in it, and as you turn up the shader, it actually applies more detail and, you know, creases to your face, which is kind of interesting. Wish that could work the other way. <laughs> looks kind of creepy, like honestly. What, uh, Smimo suggests, which is... Um, just like we turn off some um, rewards as early player or founder or benefactor rewards, you can do the same thing with faces. Uh, that's possible too. It's uh, technically it's you know fairly easy for us to turn things off. Uh, faces is sort of a feels like a kind of a weird one, uh, uh, but I, uh, but technically it's possible. So we'll take that off and noodle on it. Oh, let's talk about beards for a second. I'm seeing a few people asking about beards. I don't know why, but I've been, probably it's probably because my wife Letitia has become so excited about this. My wife, by the way, constantly tries to get me to shave mine off, that which I won't do, by the way. Uh, and you know, and, and everyone in the family in the office tries to get me to cut my ponytails, tail or tails, depending on how I braided it, which I also won't do. Um, but strangely, my wife has become enamored with, uh, with the idea about beards in our game. Uh, I think it was inspired by she was recently on a military base and they were having their March mustache madness. Uh, where not only were men, you know, gaining elaborate, uh, you know, facial hair, uh, but also women were allowed to compete uh, with uh, these very artsy uh, facial hair pieces. I'll get Joseph to show you the uh, some of these men and women ones here in just a second. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, you know, I, I also look at it and think of the beards on the dwarves and the uh, the Hobbit uh, of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, I, so I, I think we should go. You know, gangbusters on facial hair because why not? There's no harm to it. Uh, having a ton of originality into it would be good fun. And by the way, those would be fun to put in as limited edition items to me. You know, to uh, because a lot of those things are so unique. You know, it would be weird if everybody had the exact same giant beard on. Um, so why not? You know, challenge the community to give us a you know a, a, a new beard every week or a new mustache or beard every week. We'll sell them in the uh, the store for the following week or whatever it is to, 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 to kick, take along, uh, and then we'll shut it down for the next month's or week's beard. And uh, and that way each one of them is truly unique. So more than the face, it's the facial hair, which, you know, you just got to get it during the week that it's available, something like that. Uh, Joseph, you want to take us through some of those I had you queue up before we started? Absolutely. Um, a friend of mine who came to the Hobloff, uh, you may know him as Rilled on the forums. He's a <clears throat> great gentleman and a a large bearded, uh, has a giant beard himself. Yeah, I saw some pictures that he posted on Facebook that totally caught my eye, which I thought were awesome, including this wizard right here. Now that's a gentleman. That's, uh, that's outstanding right there. This guy is apparently very, very famous in the, the beard styling community. I saw that and simply fell in love. This guy, everything about this guy is awesome in my opinion. And as Lord British was saying, the ladies can compete as well with their creatively crafted beards. In this case, this beard, which is made out of teeth and a foot, actually this under the nose piece is actually a foot, uh, along with God knows what else is in there. And this person has made one with curtains and puppets and all kinds of wonderful fun stuff on there. So uh, there's definitely options for the ladies too, unless we implement dwarves where they can just simply have beards. And I just want to say it looks like uh, you're not a fan of Team City there with your your link. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the team Shitty, I see. Explain, explain, I'm sorry. Uh, team City is our build software, and he has a one of his links. I was looking for embarrassing stuff that might have been on his uh, browser that I could point out, but all I saw well, was... Well, you caught me. Um, the, uh, the, whole, the whole thing behind that is I, I uh, will rarely pass up an opportunity to turn something like sit into shit uh, or sh or city um, so mostly it's for the humor but I do have a little bit of personal beef with Team City at my last job I was automatically included on every single Team City build warning fail success etc um, email so in my first week at work I got I think 1500 1600 emails and three of them were relevant so kind of always had a 
little you know fist shaking at Team City, even though it was the admin's fault for that. Uh, I see Earth, E-R-T-H, is asking, will we restrict certain types of items to be bundled with others, like if you pick a hairstyle, will be forced to come with a flower in the hair? Um, and, uh, and the answer to that is it only, those would only happen if they were built as a single object. Um, you know, in theory, we can stack objects, but often there's only one slot. So in your hair slot, there's only going to be one thing, whatever your hairstyle is. Now, if we wanted to, we could have a, you know, just like we you know, could have a, uh, a necklace slot, um, and in theory, we could have you know ten ring slots if we really wanted to that showed up on each finger. Um, you could have a you know hairpin slot. You put a flower, or a pin, or a brooch, or something in your in your hair. In theory, we could do that. Now uh, you know right now, I already think there's more slots than we probably want to have on the character, if anything. So I don't think we'll add that uh, multiple layers of hair products. Uh, but uh, technically, it would be doable. Um, uh, the fox is asking, will we need, will, oh, will we have different body builds? I don't want to be forced to be a big muscular guy if I'm more of a magic user. Uh, that actually brings me a question. So, so either Finn or, uh, or Chris, uh, describe to me how, ar how armor works. Does armor conform to your body type, or does armor create a volume in which your skinny body would rattle around? So this will probably be over about, I don't even know, two-thirds or three-fourths of the people's heads out there. Uh, but I can go over how the, the multiple different systems. There's really there's a couple different systems for how you scale up different parts of the body. Uh, there's something called morph targets. Uh, and then there's another system, which is actually what we're using right now, which is that you can add additional bones that have weights. And this would be bones in the skeleton that you make our little computer skeleton, the internal thing. Right now you can see this. We were testing this out, actually. If you look at the character's nose and how you can scale it in and out, there's actually an extra bone in there that allows for different scaling on it. So when you probably look at that and, and think, why did they give us this one control? And that was really just because we were trying to do some proof of concept stuff uh, for future elements. For larger body types, it's actually we need to start rigging the characters for it and adding in extra bones for them so that we can have the extra scale and add extra volume. Uh, it's not trivial, but it's the type of stuff we know we need to do. Uh, same thing as getting some more features into the head so that we can have a little bit of tweaking in the heads. Uh, the current stuff that we're using for the heads, if you look at them, is we just have a swappable, the whole head swaps out, and then we have the one nose tuning thing right now, which again, we'll probably put some more effort into that, but uh, we'll probably stick with that. It's really tough to get good quality heads, uh, so having just a large set of uh, heads to choose from with some ways to tweak it is probably where we'll end up. In terms of the body, I'm not sure if we'll get... Uh, or when we'll get to the point where we can actually expand and shrink things. It gets tough to do that with all the different armor sets, and you get all these, you know, penetrations. You start limiting what you can do with the armor, and it really has to be very close-fitting armor, or else you start getting problems if you start making them small and big. But doing stuff like adding extra bones in for the arms so that we can expand the uh, arms is not, not uh, out of reach. Uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody also... Oh, sorry, Finn, want to go ahead? No, I'm sorry. He made an arm out of reach joke. Sorry. Uh, so uh, somebody also mentioned something fun about uh, can we can we have a it, might there be an adjustment on beards or facial hair? Which I think is a great idea. <laughs> uh, you know where you can take your your uh, uh, giant beard and you know make it more and more giant to its maximum strength, or or take your handlebar mustache and take those handlebars uh, you know way out there. For example, if that's really your choice, uh, would you be able to put a bone in a mustache? It's like uh, pygmies do. You mean like that type of bone in the? <laughs> I guess that would be that would be one of those kind of mustaches that women could wear too. The bone bone as a mustache. See what I want to see. I want you to take that awesome Unity cloak flowing technology and apply it to long beards. That's what I want to see. Hmm. Uh, all of it is doable. It's just the amount of time, Finn. You got a intruder behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of it's doable. It's just, uh, again, it's where we prioritize our time with uh, our improved fund-raising uh, efforts here lately, and we're adding more people in. It's, uh, you know, we'll just have to figure out if is that more important or getting more creatures more important or more suits of armor or more NPCs. 
Uh, but yeah, the beard's adding a bone for the beard. Right now, I don't believe we have one. We'd have to go and add a bone for him. But those are, you know, it may just be a beard. We can just scale it up without having extra bones for it. Uh, but beards are so quick, we'll probably just do a lot of variations, try to cover all the basics and give a few different levels in them. One, one other thing I see going on as a thread is uh, elves, dwarves, you know, big, tall, skinny, that sort of thing. Do we come with that? What do you want to do? Uh, and the other day we were asked about, you know, why our elves look so mean and nasty when some people wanted to have some nice, uh, friendly-looking, uh, beautiful elves. And the answer uh, yesterday about elves was, don't worry, the beautiful ones are coming. Those were just the bad guys that came in first. Uh, and uh, and we've built all those. My mantra I've been beating up on all the artists is to make sure all those body parts were swappable with the human body parts so that we could, uh, you know, make those uh, ultimately, uh, you know, things that uh, players could have access to. Uh, not only as a, as a, as a visual, uh, but that also, in theory, could drive into some of that body morphology. Um, which actually brings up another thing, too, which is some people may remember that the early Ultimas, Ultimas 1, 2, 3, were a hodgepodge of everything I thought was cool in the movies I was seeing those days rolled into one game. It was Time Bennett plus Star Wars plus Lord of the Rings plus, you know, 15 other things probably tossed in there, too. And starting with Ultima 4, I said, look, I don't want to be the game that is just plagiarizing off of everybody else's work. Let me go build a whole new world from scratch myself. And I, at that point, got rid of most all the other, not only obvious plagiarizations of other of other products, uh, but even all the, quote, generic fantasy uh, I removed from the game, too. So elves and dwarves and hobbits uh, all kind of went away uh, in favor of things we invented from scratch. Well, uh, for this game, one of the things we've done is we decided to go ahead and bring back Mythological creatures, or specific mythological creatures. I mean, in this case, and um, uh, and you'll you'll see in the game. You've already seen the uh, the dark elves uh, of the game. Uh, you'll also uh, very soon, if not already, be reading in Tracy's story about fauns and centaurs. Excuse me, fauns and satyrs, uh, and a number of other mythological creatures. Uh, and so the door is now open for uh, strong, common mythological creatures in addition to the uniquely evolved for this world uh, creatures, including we have the fiction to support it, uh, which is that uh, if you've been following, oh, maybe this isn't, ah, I'm not going to tip that. <laughs> I almost, I, almost uh, I think, told you a little bit more about Tracy's story than is, has been out uh, in the reading yet, but you'll, uh, you'll learn more through Tracy's books uh, about uh, the evolution and reintroduction of these mythological creatures and how that came to pass. Anybody else see one they want to tackle? There's been a repeated request by a friend of mine every day, every single day. Can there be a Riker beard? He really wants a Riker beard. Uh, I don't see why not. Just put it in the queue, and uh, you can help shepherd it to be true. The player would also always, always have to be holding in his stomach and poking at his chest in, in every direction. The Riker beard... Kind of have that, that he kind of leans forward, has his head tilted, and just always kind of <laughs> squints at things. Uh, somebody also mentioned eyeglasses uh, and patches. Uh, eye patches, uh, those are great. Uh, you know, in theory, we do monocles at that point if we wanted to. Uh, you know, anything like that. Yeah, so we, we could do uh, optics. Uh, in fact, uh, that uh, could be related to the telescope maker. I'm just making that for my own fictional notes. Uh, yep. Anything else you guys want to tackle there? Did you get cloth physics on beards? <clears throat> I did see that one go by. Is there any reason we haven't <laughs> done that? Uh, you know, other than processing time, what is what's the pros and cons of that from our code perspective? It'll be tough to make it look good. I, it, I think it'll be fun if you have a long beard on a short beard, though. Sh small cloth sims tight to physics stuff, because really we have to set up the cloth sim for it, and then we have to make it so it collide with your chin, or else it'll be sliding through your chin. I don't think you'll get any re positive results out of it if we do it for short, but if you have a long beard, like some of these crazy beards, it'd be fun to have a uh, one long beard with a little bit of a cloth sim on it so it moves around. Yeah, and I, I personally would recommend that if we're going to do that with some hair, that we do it first with long hairstyles versus beards. I think it's, it's going to be rare that a beard is going to be long enough 
to flow a around and over your shoulder. In fact, I'm not even sure we'd want it to be able to flow around and over your shoulder. And since you're looking at your own backside most of the time, uh, I think uh, giving your, 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 your hair a cloth sim is probably better bang for the buck than uh, beards would be my first response. Yeah, uh, and we've got, there's a cloth sim built into Unity. We actually use something called, coincidentally, Shroud, uh, which has a better cloth sim than what's built into Unity 4, but Unity 5 is introducing a, an entire new cloth sim that's supposed to be stellar. So we can play around and see if we get better results with that when Unity 5 comes out. Uh, we probably won't be making this switch for a while. We'll see how the betas go on it, but uh, we do expect to move to Unity 5 before ship. So we'll see if it does a better job. And uh, somebody also mentioned tattoos. I made a note of that one. I like that one too. We'll uh, we'll see uh, when we can, if and when we can get that in. Uh, we've that's something we've talked about down through the years in games too, and it's uh, just one more layer of uh, of decal to apply. So technically, it's possible. That's the UI and other overheads that uh, uh, that come up as a question. <laughs> Gabe Zess wants to know if they can make an afro with a pick in it. Well, you know. Of course, if we make an afro, which is a perfectly reasonable um, hairstyle, uh, in fact, that's one of the things we're trying to pay more close attention to is to make sure that our hairstyles really run the gambit of, uh, of kind of uh, cultural and ethnic, ethnic um, stylizations. Um, but, uh, uh, but just like somebody was mentioning earlier about if I pick a hairstyle with a daisy in it, does that mean I always have my daisy in it? Uh, you know, in our case, uh, uh, I would my, my personal vote would be that I would already say that a large afro is a fairly modern, uh, at least my understanding is a fairly modern construct. Maybe they were, maybe there was older hair styling techniques that could keep them in pretty good shape. But that particular object of pick, uh, uh, I'll have to get a little research to figure out if that's modern or historical. I mean, it, uh, I want to make sure we, we, we don't uh, uh, bring up stuff that looks too modern. But uh, conceptually, it's easily doable. So uh, let's decide, uh, let's get some people to make us some of these and, uh, and pop them in the game. Also, I just saw Smack uh, saying, wow, Unity 5 before ship. Uh, we hope so. We don't know for sure. The uh, beta is just now starting up on that, and we'll do more evaluation. We won't, aren't going to touch it till at least after R5, uh, but after R5 we'll have a better idea of where they are with it. So we'll see, but we hope we can uh, make the switch before ship. It all depends on how the betas go with it. Yeah, sorry, Rhea. You know, uh, I know you said 20 minutes for beards and 20 seconds for tattoos. Sorry about that, but uh, tattoos are actually relatively simple. It's not a hard thing to debate, so it's just a question of whether we can technically pull it off. But uh, uh, you know, the, the the reason why the others took a little longer is because uh, uh, I think there was uh, more variations in the in the problem uh, to uh, to tackle. <clears throat> uh, I see someone asking about hats. And hats are, obviously, if you put a hat on, we can put a hat on you. One of the things that uh, is similar to that that we've discussed that is another one of those that's kind of on the wish list, but we don't know for sure if we're going to get it before launch, is having the in-town outfit versus the out-of-town outfit. So when you come into town, you can set up two different outfit sets. One is your in-town outfit that can be all, like, flowing robes and cloaks and fancy shoes and fancy hat and then you're out of town outfit and when you go out to adventuring it can be the armor thing and having it so it auto switches so you can set those up with two different sets. That's the part that we don't know. Hats are easy. It's yeah, in the, fact, uh, uh, you know, on that front, by the way, I've always been inspired by uh, the fashion of a guy named Terry Moogler and, uh, 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 and he has these hats uh, that are almost like masks uh, as well that... Uh, uh, I've always wanted to do kind of our version of things like you know masky hats, kind of somewhere in between the two. But uh, but yeah, so we'll with I think those would be another great thing. And by the way, just like I said earlier, that uh, maybe beard of the week would be a fun thing to put in and just have them rotate in and out. You know, hats hats are also you know fashion. They kind of come in into vogue and out of vogue. I mean, if you want a hat that is of a period style, you may find a way to get it made modernly. But as often as not, the best way to get it is find one that's in a you know a period hat in a resale shop. So if we went to things like hats, uh, which are not very costly to the game, and ran them for limited periods of time, sold them out and closed it, uh, then uh, you know as those were lost in the game, you know because don't forget if somebody uh, quits playing and has one of those hats in their inventory, that hat is effectively lost to the world, and uh, uh, and so they'll become more and more rare over time. So I, 
anyway, I think there might be some fun things we can do about true limited edition fashion uh, that is that comes out on a curiosity, uh, and especially if a lot of it is sourced uh, through uh, the community. You know, what a great way to kind of keep uh, this kind of changing richness. Oh, and pardon, but my uh, my little alarm goes off. This is my time to take the witching bell. Uh, thank you all very much for these great ideas on both uh, the uh, the fishing as well as uh, character customization. Uh, team, if you guys want to continue on the customization stuff for a little bit, you can. Uh, but don't forget to set up plenty of time to give out the prizes for today. Thank you all very much. Don't lawyer us, man. Don't lawyer me, bro. And uh, otherwise, pardon, I got to run off and take a kid to the movies. And and with this last 15 minutes, we're going to turn it into please ask us questions you want to know about Richard while he's gone. Wait, no, and don't we'll answer. <laughs> we know all his secrets. <laughs> Have fun, right, Richard. Bye. Yeah. Yay. All right. We've got a whole queue of questions over here on the right if anybody wants to dig into those. Uh, let's see. Can I dye my skin blue? I'd love a super long beard that flops around. Would it be possible to have multicolor beards, like brown hair with platinum highlights? I'll These go into great. the uh, dyeing your skin blue. We're still not super happy with our skin shader. It's one of those big things. I think it's gotten much better. Uh, we've got kind of a rim effect on it. We can build color into the shader for most of those. It determines how we make some of the faces initially and the skin initially. So doing colored skin is possible, but it's not something that we've talked about. Oh, and actually we've got the cus character customizations. You can color your skin, so people already know it's there. Uh, but no, we weren't planning on having like characters be able to dye themselves blue. Uh, Skin tones is much easier and uh, holds up better. As for the tattoos, I think the only question on that is there's not many places on your body that are still visible once you're in in, uh, in garb, once you're in armor. Maybe that's the type of thing that we can do for in town if we do the second outfit so you can like have stuff that actually you're not wearing gloves. What else do we have up here? You're failing, Joseph. Give me some questions. Oh, okay, sure, not a problem. Well, people will. Uh, this is from the Mad Hermit. Will players be able to copy the likeness of another character? Hmm, I'm not quite sure what that means. Likeness. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But here's one that uh, has been asked a few times that I definitely know what that means, and this is from Ziv. Um, Ziv would love to see anthropomorphic playable characters. Are there any plans for new races in any of the episodes, such as lizard men, cat people, etc.? Uh, I think we hope to get some in there. I do want to go back to the Mad Hermits now that I've had uh, more than two seconds to think about it, which is one of the things that I think it's Dukes get, Dukes and above, Dukes and Lords of the Manor get, is uh, they get their own custom face. Are you hogging the camera, Joseph? I think you're hogging the camera. Nope. Hmm. All right. On my screen, it only shows you the whole time, and I'm getting tired of looking at you. Well, maybe, you maybe you clicked me. It's the hair, man. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I believe Dukes and uh, Lords of the Manor, uh, Dukes and above, maybe get uh, their own face made where they can either describe something or send us a picture of themselves, and we're going to make them their own custom head, just like players have seen that there's a... I think we've got five or six different head styles in there now, and obviously we'll have uh, many more before ship, but they'll get their, each one will get their own custom head, and those we are not planning on making those something that other people can use. Uh, so those guys will get whatever they want, actually individually made by a uh, 3D artist, you know, with feedback. But we are not uh, planning on allowing other people to share that head. That's going to be unique to that individual person. So if that's what it was about, uh, no, you aren't going to be able to copy their likeness. We may have some allow some way that they can let other people use their head, although that may get creepy. As for the anthropomorphic thing, I, I'm a fan. Uh, we're trying not to force too much uh, uh, fiction onto Richard and Tracy and letting them kind of set the fiction. Uh, but I think a lot of us are fans. In terms of actual game design, a lot of people don't realize that we're also fans of like lizard men and rat men and those type things because a lot of them can use the same 3D rig and animations as a... Uh, other humanoid types, which saves us a ton of time if we only have to do like a new skin, a new model for the thing. 
and we can reuse a lot of the animations. Next question. I'm scrolling back up to find some. All right. Uh, okay, this is an obvious question, which is something that is very something you guys deal with every day. Which is, of course, will long hairstyles create clipping issues with armor, or will there be a collision effect? And that's from the box. Uh, so I can go into the cloth stuff. Right now, we we try to minimize the way the cloth sims work. Is you can you set up the cloth like you can imagine a cloak is really just a kind of a sheet with a bunch of polygons in it. And then we set up for the character, we set up collision for them that can be capsules that we've set up to block off where it can go. And so the cape or whatever it will, will wrap over that. Right now, in fact, actually, I think that was a bug in R4 and probably was in R3 and R2 as well, that some suits of armor would clip through the capes. And that's because we are not setting specific data capsules for each set of armor. So some armor is a little bit bigger than others and we're using the collision that is the generic collision for the character, so the, the cape, the cloak, actually penetrates through it. Uh, but anyways, just again, since I'm Mr. Techie Guy, trying to explain how some of that works. So yes, uh, hair will actually work, that it'll, it'll flow over your back, it'll work like a cape. Now the part where it'll get tricky is, if you're wearing a cape and you have long hair, those two are totally gonna, <laughs> are totally gonna collide with each other and penetrate each other. Uh, on that uh, note, though, one of the things we have not made good use of yet, and we probably will going forward, is we actually do have, you know, with cloth sims, we can actually use wind. And right now, I don't think we have, I think we have a gentle wind set pretty much everywhere in the game uh, at all times. Uh, and doing more with that just so it does make your cloak blow to the side or your hair blow to the side if we hook up hair on a cloth sim is one of those key things we need to have. Or having the tunnel where when you walk into the tunnel and you're going down the tunnel, you know, that there's a strong wind coming in your face, blowing your cape back. Uh, but anyways, we'll try to do more with that going forward. What else we got? Will paper dolls have a an about button that you can enter custom text for people to read? Uh, absolutely. If it's up to me right now, I don't think we have that in the UI, but I think it's just, uh, honestly an oversight. That's one of those easy type things. And people always want to have stuff about them where they tell their little story. Uh, again, we just haven't got the UI for it. I know most games have it, but, uh, I think us not having it is probably just an oversight at this point. Here's a question from Elspath. Uh, is there currently any decision one way or the other on whether or not we'll be letting players turn off their helmets so you can see faces during combat? Uh, if, if I make the decision, I'm going to say yes. I know some players right now, I think most people just want to hide their head because there's so few choices that they look very much like each other. Uh, but I think when we actually have more customization and there are more options for head models and those type things, people will want to turn off their head so that because you can actually recognize people by their face, especially if we start doing some of this customization stuff that we're talking about where you can have a tattoo on, a, on your face or an eye patch or lots of different hair models. Uh, I know it's not totally immersive to not have your helmet on but uh, visually, but it's definitely better for the role-playing side of things. Indeed. We are down to our last five minutes. So, firstly, thank you, community, for all of your questions. You have rapid-fired questions today faster than I've ever seen them. Um, normally, Gina helps keep... or Actually, normally, Gina is entirely responsible for copying and pasting the questions, but today I had a very hard time keeping up, so that was awesome. Um, but, as this is our seventh and final deep dive before our large 12-hour celebration tomorrow, which I hope you guys will join us for. Uh, we have 21 more prizes to give away. We have 10 Founder Adventure pledges and 10 R5 Weekend Access Passes, and of course, our really neat, cool prize that we're going to show at the end. And again, since Lord Gorn is not here to read the quite to read the usernames himself I will tr attempt to read them in the best Gorn fashion as possible um, which is pronouncing them even if they're not meant to be pronounced so 10 founder adventure pledges given to the following 10 people Elwood Gasigge that's G C G E Condra Meister Crystal Epstein 
Rewester3477, Erwin Ryman, Hilton, spelled H-Y-L-T-O-N, 594 Lance, Dolores Matthew, I'm a Harks Didiper, <laughs> Gradius. So congratulations, guys. You get, all of you get, a Founder Adventure Pledge, and we will contact you about that before R5. And, <laughs> and yes, Quick Star Dragon, you can copy my shirt. Um, uh, we'll contact you after tomorrow, but before R5, to make sure that you have your pledge good to go for R5. Speaking of R5, the following ten people win R5 weekend access passes. The Good Gee, but that's D Good G E. Gwinch, Art of Deception, Janet 68W, Jennifer 75Z, Mandragoran, Teddy, JP, Meat Heed, and Petra 07JHE. And this little thing here. So congratulations to the R5 winners, but this thing here is what we're giving away to you guys right now from our good friends over at Plantronics. Again, they sent us an awesome box full of goodies that we all promptly fought over. And of all the things in the box, this is what I wanted the most because if you go to Google or you go to Amazon and you read reviews for the best headset, Plantronics Voyager is always the top one. It is always the best, highest rated, nicest call quality, best battery life, headset for Bluetooth. So as soon as I saw this, I um, I had to get tackled because I tried to run away with one. Um, I mean, look how swanky this is. Like, even the package has, like, a magnet that holds it shut. I mean, how cool is that? Um, but unfortunately, I cannot have this, so even though it pains me greatly, we have to give it to you. Um, so the Voyager Legend, really, really swanky, awesome Plantronics Bluetooth headset, goes to Elemenofi. That's E-L-E-M-E-N-O-F-I. So congratulations. You get this awesome thing. I hope you have a cell phone. All right. So thank you, community. We're here with uh, Chris Spears, tech lead for Shroud of the Avatar, and Finn Staber, our pro designer at large for Shroud of the Avatar. Would you guys like to say any parting words to the community? Go ahead, Finn. Uh, well, um, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, guys. Um, and I think y'all are going to be uh, really excited about some of the some of the new improvements that we've done. Even just this past week, is huge, huge, um, huge changes, huge improvements um, with, the, with with some of the new tech that we've been implementing, and uh, some of the stuff we've even talked about today with uh, skin shading and stuff like that. I think y'all are going to be really pleased with that. And uh, it's just a pleasure, pleasure to be working on it, pleasure to be uh, part of this group, and. Uh, not to be, um, you know, I know, I know we're, we're, we're in cahoots with uh, Plantronics now, but uh, other than that, I mean, I haven't gotten any free free stuff, and honestly, I think, I mean, they, they make some of the best stuff, so, and it's not, that's not going into my pocket. I'm just saying that it, it's pretty awesome stuff. And on those lines, someone just said in chat, now don't quote me on this, because I can't verify this, but apparently this works with Xbox and PS4, too. Wish I could win. <laughs> All right, I'll sign off next here, and then I'll let uh, you wrap it up if you want to, Joseph. Sounds great. Uh, just great talking to you guys. I know we're going to be talking with you and doing lots more stuff uh, tomorrow. Uh, did we actually tell them what's going on tomorrow? Are we waiting to keep it a surprise? It's a bit of a secret, but I can give you a little taste of what's going on tomorrow. So we Probably. haven't told them that we're going to be broadcasting all live from sitting in the hot tub? Oh, well, okay, no. no one knows that yet. <laughs> the uh, the Portalarium hot tub is going to bring down the third floor. But no, uh, community, tune in tomorrow at 12 noon Central Time, CDT. We are going to be broadcasting for 12 solid hours. And whereas the last seven days have been the deep dive topics that you guys voted for, the 12 hours is going to be a celebration of all things good. We're going to be drinking Baileys from a shoe. It's going to be outstanding. We're going to be telling stories about the old origin days. Tracy Hickman's going to join us for some story time. Uh, Lord British is going to tell us all great kinds of great stuff about lore. Some of the people that you don't ever get to see on camera, they're going to come on camera and say hi to you. All kinds of fun stuff. And we're even going to let some of you guys jump in the hangout with us and uh, drive us nuts yourself. So it's going to be awesome. We're looking forward to it. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow at noon. We're going to be going noon to midnight celebrating everything Shroud of the Avatar and all the wonderful history and this great journey that we've all gone on together. Um, and of course, you know, Got any questions? Always find me, uh, inbox me on the forums. 
Finn's dog is very, very cute. <laughs> That's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. But without further ado, we're going to sign off and get ready for tomorrow's giant broadcast where we're going to be giving away even more stuff. So tune in, because you may already be a winner. All right, community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are actually, I was just told that we are less than $2,000 from making the same amount after Kickstarter that we did during Kickstarter. So we are very, very, very close to an awesome goal that we will celebrate tomorrow with all of you. So thank you, community. I don't have anything to drink, but I, I salute you with my, my nori seaweed. <laughs> so we will see you tomorrow. Hey, there you go. Got some uh, oi ocha there. Nice. Mm -hmm. So community, we'll see you tomorrow. Right. See you guys tomorrow.